Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right, go ahead and let's go ahead and get back into the Word of God where we left off this morning. We're talking about Jesus being the personification. Well, let's, let's talk about going into 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, our attitude toward the Word. Hallelujah. And, and I like uh, the thing that we've done in our studies on Wednesday night by talking about and going through the books in chronological order. That gives us an idea of, uh, of what Paul would say or different writers would say. When we're doing, of course, we're doing on Paul's life. But what would be said in the time frame that he wrote. Now, 1 Thessalonians is the first epistle he wrote. And so if we read something there that, that's very strong, then we can say, you know, this is something that was really on his heart in the very beginning of writing any letter to any church. And so we got 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, talking about, um, the, uh, Paul writes in verse 13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh in you uh, that believe. It doesn't effectually work in people who don't believe. It effectually works in those that believe. But notice he said that they receive what they preach as the word of God, not as the word of men. Amen. But as it is in truth, the word of God which effectually worketh in you that believe. And so we find out here Paul saying that the word of God that they preached was God's word and not that of man. One of the things we have in uh, in the church today, one of the things that Satan's been trying to do is undermine the authority of the Word of God. And when people preach and say what the Word says, ah, that's your opinion of this. They, they, Satan's always fought from the very beginning the authority of God's Word. If you'll go back to Genesis when he talked to Eve, he came to her and said, half God said. And she said, he told us not to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, neither touch it. That's not what God said. He just said, don't eat of it, lest you die. And Satan goes, God knows that in the day you do that, you'll become as God's. In other words, he's holding, in other words his, he was holding out on you. So his word's not credible. Satan has fought the credibility of God's word from the beginning. Everybody say, from the beginning. He hasn't changed his tactic. He's still fighting the credibility of the word of God. And, uh, you know, people just come along and say, well, that's your opinion. That's what you think. Well, I don't, you know, that's just, you know, it's, this is a matter of faith. It's always been a matter of faith. You believe it's God's word or you don't. And I told somebody one, you know, one time, I said, look, here's the deal. If you're right and I'm wrong, nobody will ever know. Because when you die, that, that's just it. Nobody will ever know that they were wrong, right or wrong. If there's, no after, if there's nothing after us, in other words, we're not spirits. We don't live eternally. That when all is said and done, we leave here, that's it. There's nothing else. You won't know that you were right. right. But if I'm right and you're wrong, you'll know it instantly. And there's an eternal price to pay for your lack of faith. Your lack of faith disturbs me. <laughs> Love that. You know, Darth Vader, your lack of faith disturbs me. I told Shannon the other day, I said that the greatest thing they ever did, the greatest move Lucas ever made was using James Earl Jones' voice for Darth Vader. It's just, just an awesome move on his part. The, so we take the Bible, we take it as, by faith, it's a matter of faith that we believe it's God's word. Amen. Now we have, you know, we have evidentiary uh, things throughout history and throughout time that, that prove it out. But still, no matter what, in the end, it's going to be a matter of faith that it's the word of God. If you believe that it's the word of God, then it should govern how you live, how, you li how your life is lived. And you should have a reverence or an awe for the word of God. Amen? Are you here? Y'all go home. And we read this this morning. We'll go ahead and read more of it. Uh, for John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Um, 
2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God's word, now remember we reverence Jesus, we should reverence the word. As we said this morning, Jesus is the personification of the word. Therefore, he, you know, his life, his ministry is a summarization of the, of the intent, purpose, and, and uh, of, of, the, of the whole word. He's like the abridged version. Now, I'm not saying, don't take me wrong in saying that. I'm saying his ministry. Remember, the Bible says he is the word. And so he's the logos of God. He says so he's not, but you know, so, we, so if we want to know what all the written word means and goes, we can look at the ministry of Jesus and get the abridged version. Now, that's not a cut, okay? That's, that's something where you can just simply look at the ministry of Jesus and see the intent of the whole written word, the whole counsel of the word of God. Amen? Remember, Jesus said that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that they might have life. And so he presents a thesis there. That is that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The antithesis is that he came to give life and give it more abundantly. He came to give Zoe. Yes. Life to the full. You know, life in the manner that God possesses it. Eternal life. He came to give it and give it to the full. Hallelujah. Or in greater abundance. Hallelujah. And so we should reverence the word. Say so the word should be reverenced. See, and, and that, now listen, you, and that doesn't usually ha, can, uh, present a problem to people when the word is something they want to hear. They don't have a hard time accepting that or cherishing it or talking about how wonderful the word is when it's something they like. But you see, when you reverence the word, when the stuff, the, the, the true test and measure of it is, when the stuff comes you don't like. When it comes to the things you don't want to hear about. Thank you for your enthusiasm. That's the true measure. You know, your true measure of, of submission. Uh, you know, we've said this before in the past. Submission only begins where agreement ends. And we're to submit to those who are the rule over us. And that doesn't, what does that mean? We're not always going to agree on everything. Now, that does not include false doctrine or error. And I don't know that many pastors that are, that are teaching false doctrine. I mean, there's something, not, not, everybody, not everybody has all truth on anything. Amen. But when, we, you know, when, when the word's being preached, you know, we're to, we're to, and when it confronts us and we don't like it, we just don't pack up and say, well, I don't like that. I'm out of here. Well, we, now, in our era, we do, but that's not the way the Bible teaches it. Amen. No, when, when you are confronted with things you don't like, there's a choice to make. You, do you reverence the word? Do you honor the word? Do you say, well, the word says it, therefore I have to change. Because that's, you're going you're to encounter that all the time. You will never stop growing. You'll never stop changing while you're on the earth. And let me say, no matter how far down the road you are right now, there are more things that need to be adjusted and changed and tweaked and, 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 uh, and shaped and, and metamorphosed, transformed in your life, and you'll be doing that the rest of your life here on earth. Amen. Amen. Because the, the further you walk with God, the more, the more insight you have and the more light you have and the more light you have, the more you can see and the more you can see, the more you know it needs to be adjusted. That's just the way it is. Well, that was the most enthusiastic response I've gotten all week. Come on now. You know it's true. And so we have to, we have to honor and reverence the word to keep that, keep that mindset before us. Um, that when the word is spoken, and we don't, even if we don't like it, we, we have to come to the place where it's irrelevant to us whether it's, it's, a, it's, it's something we like or not. Because you're going to go across scriptures that just go cross grain to your flesh. How many woke up, how many read the Bible and said something in your flesh goes, ah! How many, how many seen that video? Janie posted it the day before yesterday or yesterday. I forgot which one. It's this um, husky. And they're telling him it's time to get in the kennel. And it's laying on its side and he goes, and it's like he's saying no. And it's like three or four minutes of this husky. The guy said, come on, it's time to get in the kennel. No. No. He tries to kind of, I mean, he just, he don't want to get in the kennel. I got a beagle that does the same thing, except she don't bark, say it. She, she runs. 
Their flesh doesn't want to be in that kennel. Your flesh don't want to be told what to do. Hello? I mean, the Bible tells us to do certain things. And there are a lot of people who say, well, I just, don't, I just don't think that God cares if I do such and such or such and such. That's, and, and what you give is you, give, you, you spout out an opinion. And in that opinion, you, you make declarations that are not biblical. Because you're, you don't want to do what the Word says. We have to honor the Word. Can I say honor the Word? Okay. Now, let's look over here. The Word is a necessity and not a luxury. Jesus says in Matthew 4.4, 4, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread. I don't remember Satan was tempting him. He said, if you be the son of God, turn the stone into bread. And Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, if you're going to live by the word of God, see, uh, and let's call him, read some more. Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Job 23, 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed his words, the words of his mouth, more than my necessary food. Now, Brother Hague used to say this. People feed themselves three hot meals a day and one cold snack a week spiritually. They feed the bodies three hot meals a day and one, and then spiritually they feed themselves one cold snack a week and expect to grow. Now, how many of you know that you cannot grow physically? If you, think about it. Let's reverse, let's reverse the natural and the spiritual in our lives. If you ate spiritually every time that you ate naturally and ate naturally every time you ate spiritually, what would happen to you physically? Don't say anything. Well, you, you know, in, in most cases, people would dry up. They would dry up. But the Job said, I esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. So the word of God is a, is a necessity, not a luxury. <clears throat> Amen. So what do we do? Then we, we, we keep the right attitude towards the word. We keep it as a primary, primary uh, force in our life. We keep it before us. And we let it direct and guide and keep us. We do what it says do. Amen. And we have to make a decision. Now, I'm... I'm, I'm Remember Dad Hagen giving his testimony about being on the bed of affliction. Y'all probably, if you've read any of his teachers or listened to any of his teachers, you've heard him tell that story. And he, he made it, when he got saved, he made a promise to the Lord that I'll always do what I see in your word. And he said sometimes it might take him an hour to turn a page just because of the, the affliction that he was in. And he said he was going through the Bible and revelation was coming. Things, and he said he got along there and all of a sudden he realized he wasn't getting anything. He said, Lord, what, what's going on here? I, I, I'm not getting anything. He said, you, you know, back over and such and such. I said this. He said, I said this. And, and you didn't do it. He said, it took about an hour and a half to get back to it. Just, just turn the page because it was, he was so afflicted from, from the heart disease and the, the partial paralysis that, that he could, it was hard for him to move. Got back there, found that scripture, said, now, Lord, I repent. From this day forward, I'll do this. And then the revelation started coming again. Sometimes we, we don't, we see stuff in the Bible and we kind of brush over it and go, oh, I don't like that and just keep right on going. Or we just don't do it because it's inconvenient. I mean, how many know sometimes things are inconvenient? You got people who go around and say, I don't, I don't believe in going to church. Usually because it's, they don't want to be, don't bother with getting up and getting dressed and going. Well, you need church. You need the word. You need somebody to speak into your life. Hallelujah. All right. Next, uh, the word and the spirit work in harmony one with the other. Now, growing up in a classical Pentecostal background, I was around a lot of people all the time, you know, they just, they just wanted the move of the Holy Ghost. They ain't got ever been the charismatic, really the word of faith people, all they wanted was the word. Didn't want any of that, that uh, you know, uh, fleshly show. You know, you got to have both. So you need the word and the spirit. They work together. Amen. You know, some people weren't more interested in having the move of the Holy Ghost and, and not having the Word, didn't care what the doctor was, as long as they had some kind of move or manifestation. Well, you, got, you know, listen, if you'll, look, if you'll go by the Word of God, you make sure the manifestations are godly and not out of line with the written Word. Amen. Are y'all here? You go home. You know, people do all kinds. Of, I remember the prayer chair. Janie remembers the prayer chair at the cottage prayer meetings. What was the prayer chair? It was just a chair they put in the middle of the room and everybody prayed over you. 
Everybody would prophesy over everybody. Get them all in the middle of the room and lay hands on them. Everybody had a word for everybody. If you didn't get a word, something was wrong. I mean, you go home depressed. I, I remember the first time I went home without a word, I was depressed. Something was wrong. I mean, just about affected my salvation because I didn't get a word. Hello? Everybody in there prophesying. And they're always saying the same thing. And you can speak with, with exuberance and with, with uh, whatever and speak all kinds of nice things. Don't make it prophecy. You know, the, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The Spirit, him, the Spirit determines as He wills. So we get in the prayer chair. And see, that's the one thing I liked about when I came over among the Word of Faith people is that everything had to be based on the Word. Now, you can take the move of the Spirit and mix it with the Word, <clears throat> or vice versa, take the Word and mix it with the move of the Spirit, which is how it's supposed to be. Then you can stay in a balanced lifestyle and be a blessing. We can all be a blessing. Because, you know, what happens if you go to somebody and minister to them and you don't have a manifestation of the Spirit? You give them the Word. Well, the Word says this, and that's what the Word says. And if you get a manifestation, uh, if there is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, working of miracles, some, one of the power gifts of the Spirit, whatever uh, is, it takes place, if the Holy Spirit decides to manifest himself, well, praise God. Because the Word and the Spirit do work in harmony with one another. They don't work contrary or independent one another. They work in harmony together. Ever say glory. glory. Amen. But I can tell you that, you know, uh, there's a lot of things done in the name of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't got nothing to do with. I've seen people go up and say, the Lord told me to tell you da-da-da-da-da, and the Lord didn't tell them that. How do you know? Because it didn't line up with the written word. If you knew what the word says, you know it, you know it wasn't the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus says in John 14, verses 16, 17, and then 26, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Now, we've, we've talked about this in the past. But the word comforter comes from the Greek parakletos, or parakle, but parakletos is the actual form of the word used here. Um, you know, when you got different forms of words, when you know the different tenses and the voices, that kind of stuff, changes how words, you know, just like uh, say and said, okay? The root word say, but said is still a form of that word. Here, parakletos. Well, that word has, carries and imports the meaning of more than just the comforter. It, it carries comforter, advocate, helper, strengthener, Stand by, teacher, and intercessor. Okay, there's seven meanings there. All right. So when Jesus said that, really, he was saying, I'll send you another parakletos. And the word another here carries the import another after the same manner as myself. In other words, the Holy Spirit was going to be in, in, in his dispensation and manifestation of the earth, the same thing that I've been to you in, in, in person with you. That he may abide with you forever. Notice what Jesus says. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Then verse 26. But the parakletos, the comforter, helper, strength, you know, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, a lot of times we're looking for the Holy Ghost for a manifestation when the Holy Ghost has come to teach. Be a teacher to us. To be a guide to us. And if we listen to the voice of the Spirit instead of the voice of the flesh or the voice of our mind or the voice of our wants, your wants are not the guide of your life. Jesus said the Holy Ghost is going to be our guide. Amen? That he was going to be our teacher. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. He'll, see, he'll teach you all things. Look at chapter 16. We'll read the verses 7 through 14. We're, we're, just, we're talking about this whole line. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comfort of Pericletos will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness of, and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. In other words, the spirit of God is not going to manifest outside the parameters of what the Word of God spoken to us. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Remember, Jesus said something along this line. 
He said, I, I, the things that I do, I, I only do because I see my Father in heaven do them. Yes. He's saying the Holy Ghost is going to follow the same pattern. Amen. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. So Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is going to come. <clears throat> he's going to guide them in the truth. He's going to remind them what, the word, what he said in his words. That same Spirit's the same Holy Ghost that moved on Paul and caused him to write the doctrine he wrote. Amen. So the Word and the Spirit are working together. I hear people come up and say, well, God showed me. And then they tell you, tell you something that God showed you that the Bible doesn't teach. Then God didn't show you. Because the one you're saying is showing you is really the Holy Ghost. Because he said, God the Father is not down here doing the Word. The Holy Spirit is the representative of the Godhead. He's the one speaking to you. Amen. When you hear the voice of God, it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's in the earth. He's the one sent. He's the one to guide. He's the one to teach. He's the one to reveal. And he's working in harmony with the written word. And he says this. Jesus said he'll, he'll, he'll glorify me, not himself. Well, remember Jesus is what? In the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with God. And the Logos was God. So the Holy Ghost is going to glorify the word. His actions and his manifestations and what he does will bring, bring glory to the word of God. You won't have to wonder when, when, if it's the Holy Spirit manifestation, it'll be in line with and, and, and uh, of the Word of God. It will magnify. It will magnify. It will magnify um, the manifestation. That yeah, the, the Holy Spirit, but His manifestation will magnify and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, "If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto Me." Remember, He's the personification of the Word. Therefore, when the Holy Spirit's in manifestation, it will always be able to go back into the Word and prove that out, that that was God's, God at work. Now, when you start getting manifestations that the Bible doesn't bear out, hello? You know, and, and here's the thing. If the Spirit of God manifests as He wills, you just can't turn him, and on, him on and off like a light switch. Amen. Amen. Now, when the Spirit of God tells you to do something a certain way, he's there, he's there to make manif manifest himself and to do what he said. But you can't get outside of that and do what you want to do. Now, uh, preachers used to get in trouble all the time back in, you know, when they have miracle services. They have one night, I know one well-known minister. Uh, one time, he, you know, a good friend of mine was, was, was his coat holder, worked in his ministry. And he um, said one night, the Spirit of God came on him, and he took a, 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 a thing of water and just slung it across the congregation. Had like a picture on, up on the platform or something. He just slung it across the congregation. Everybody hit, got healed, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost instantly. Next night came back, tried it again, everybody just got wet. Why? Because you can't just mimic the Holy Ghost. No, you go to some meeting and God runs across, everybody's got back problems. The Spirit of God said, lay down. The Spirit of God told me to do this. And then run across everybody's back and everybody had back problems, gets up healed. Well, you don't want anybody running on your back if your back's hurting. Unless it's the Holy Ghost instructing. Right. Somebody see that, go home and try, and all they do is get more, more hurt backs. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to fall. We have to let the Spirit of God work in line with the Word of God. The Word says He manifests, he manifests Himself as He wills, not our will. Now, where we, what do we do? We stay subjected to Him, and we stay willing to Him, and we stay open to Him, and we flow with Him. But the written word says he manifests as he will. What does that mean? I can't make him manifest. That's what Dad Hagen used to say. He said, you know, I'm not left helpless if I don't have a manifestation of the Spirit. If I don't have an anointing in manifestation. I'm not left helpless. I can give him the word. Praise God. I can give him the word. Praise God. Amen. So what do we do? When we're in a situation where there's no manifestation, we give in the Word. Because the Word and the Holy Spirit work together. And even if the Spirit's in manifestation, He's going to work in conjunction with the Word. Uh, now let me show you uh, further. Mark 16, 19, and 20. So then after the Lord had spoken unto, unto them, He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. They went forth, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the Word with signs following. So what does that say? It didn't say that the, the Word... Uh, came because of the signs. It said the signs came because of the word. Hallelujah. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.10. 1 
through 13. But, the, but God has revealed them unto us. Uh, let's go. Let me, get, let me get over there. There's, some, there's something pre preceding that I need to read. I find it interesting the things that people quote from the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We were in there a few months ago. Verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor, the, nor of the princes of this world that came to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, now this is, you hear this quoted all the time by people, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. They'll just jump off and run out of there with that. Well, you've, you've really presented a, a, a false because you haven't presented the whole. And by taking the partial out, you've, you've skewed it so it's no longer true. Amen? Why? Because the next word says, but. God hath revealed them to us. How? By his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now you've not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us, which things we also we speak not in words that which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not. This is where a lot of the church is, folks. And when you check ourselves up, make sure we're not here. The natural man receiveth not the things of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. He that is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is judged of no man. For he, who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? It's a question. And then the answer is this. But we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul writing to the church at Corneth, Tells us, you know, verse 9, I love that. I have not seen, hear, have not heard, neither has any done. People go quote and preach sermons on that. Well, you need to preach the rest of it. Because it changes the whole, the whole meaning of verse 9 if you preach the rest of it. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. Hallelujah. What's He revealing? He's reveal, he reveals His Word to us. Amen. Amen. So we don't need to have the spirit of the world teaching us. We need to have the spirit of God teaching us. Can you say amen? amen. amen. This is why it's important. And I, say, I said some things on this line, this, along this line this morning. It's important what we listen to and who we listen to. You'll get people going, well, I don't know. I'll tell you what I think about it. Well, I don't care. You see, that's a trouble. You're in trouble. You're heading for trouble when people start telling you what they think about it. Particularly if you listen to it. I tell you what I'd do. I'd, I'd, that pastor said he wanted to, some people, people come by that all preachers, all they want is money. That's just a lie. It takes money to run the kingdom of God, but they're not, they're not out trying to rip you off. They, they, listen, that's not a new accusation. They accuse Paul. They accuse Paul of stealing money. Hello? That's just a, just a lying, stingy devil. Judas accused Jesus of, of, of misusing money. Remember that? Why is he letting her wash his feet? Don't you, doesn't he know that that perfume could have been sold for 300 pence or more and given to the poor? Mm -hmm. And the Bible wouldn't have said that he said that basically because he was a thief. It's always the thieves wanting to accuse everybody else of stealing money. When you study the Bible, all those doing the accusing were the thieves. What do you mean? Uh, how's that practical? Thing? They don't want to tithe. They're, th they're robbing from God. They're a thief. Isn't that right, Brother Bill? See, they're, 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 their heart's that of a thief. 
So they want to accuse all the ministers of, of, of being thieves themselves when the truth of the matter is they don't want to do what the word says so they accuse everybody else of being a thief. It gets kind of blunt when you do it like that, doesn't it? Ah, oh, just we ought to love everybody. Well, we do. But, you know, love doesn't just pat you on the back and tell you keep doing wrong. No. Nope. The Spirit of God reveals the things of God. God's given us His Word. And the Holy Spirit's going to work in conjunction with His Word. And in harmony with the Word. And under the authority of the Word. Amen. But this, look, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I know we've already covered this this year. But, you know. Verse 11, you know, we go down here, there are, given, uh, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Difference of administration, 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Um, diversities of operations, same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. He goes on talks about the different manifestations, verse 11. But all these work with that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Who wills? The Holy Spirit wills. It is the will of the Spirit. When manifestation of the Spirit are in demonstration, it's at the will of the Spirit. And we have to be yielded to, that, to Him, and, and, and He will do it in harmony with the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, let's see here. All right, we'll move on here some more. So the, the Holy Spirit will work in harmony with the Word. You always know a, I like the safety of being able to go to the Word of God and know that the, what, what, I, what I just experienced is biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, something, it's a manifestation of the Spirit that brought blessing. But you know, you can feel blessed and it not be the Holy Spirit manifestation. Now, there's a number of years ago, there was a television network that used to have this guy on there. And uh, he just, every night he'd get up there and he'd, he'd call people out and he would just Tell them everything about themselves, where they lived, you know, what kind of job, what their job was, on, just go on and 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 on. You remember that, Brother Bill? Yeah. Couldn't find out later. I believe, if I'm, am I accurate? He found out later he was homosexual. Yep. Now he was just telling them stuff about themselves that that there was no purpose. The only time we saw this happen was um, in the Bible. Anything close to that. Remember when, when, P when Philip came? Peter, Jesus said, I, before you came, I saw you under the tree. That was just letting them know that he was walking in the spirit. I wasn't reading, you know, and just reading the people's mail and then, then taking up an offering. Dick, you live at such and such, such and such. You've been married for 36 years. You know, when you were 14, you did such and such, such and such. Let's receive an offering. And you want to give. Wow, that's God. That's a familiar spirit. So it's a familiar spirit. It's a familiar with things. You know, nothing going on about your future or nothing going on that's, you know, giving you direction in life. It's, it's control. But I like knowing that when I, when, when the, I can go to the Word and prove out things by the Spirit of God. Amen. Instead of just getting a fuzzy feeling. That fuzzy feeling is kind of like fuzzy math or fuzzy logic. You know, there's a thing called fuzzy math, and it was, it was all off. It wasn't even accurate. You know, but, you know, they tried, so they get a gold star. Well, you know, yeah, great. Now they're going to go to the grocery store and get ripped off every time because they can't add and subtract. <laughs> but they'll feel better about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. They gave them a dollar and got, you know, uh, got 10 cents back for a 30-cent product, and they don't know any better because they got gold stars for doing that in school. <laughs> Too fuzzy for me. Amen. But you know, the Spirit of God is given to manifest, the manifestation is given to profit with all, and it's divided, divided every man severally as he will, as the Spirit wills. So that we know from the Word of God when the Spirit's a manifestation. Hallelujah. That's one thing I always appreciate about, appreciate about Dad Hagen. 
He'd be in one service and be powerful demonstrations of the Spirit. Next night, come back and teach a Bible lesson. Everybody wanting to have the manifestation again. Do you know the Holy Spirit can be just as strong a manifestation anointing the teaching of the Word of God as He can and cause the people to get out of wheelchairs? Just as much the Holy Ghost. I said just as much a manifestation of the Holy Ghost to anoint the teaching and preaching of the Word as it is to have people get up off of deathbeds or legs grow out or, or, or working of miracles. Anything that would be supernaturally, you know, a manifestation of God, this just is anointed to teach and preach the Word of God if that's what He's anointing that night or that day. If that's what the Spirit of God's highlighting and anointing, then it's just as much Him as it is when somebody got out of the wheelchair. We like the spectacular. You know, back, that, uh, not that, but uh, Pastor Hagen has, has said for years, he said, don't miss the supernatural looking for the spectacular. Amen. We want some spectacular manifestation, some spectacular event. And God's moving over here, maybe on this particular day. In, in, in a, uh, how many of you have ever been whitewater rafting? I've been on the river in a canoe or anything. Nobody in this room but me. All right, I'm going to have to take y'all whitewater raft to teach y'all something. Well, you know, you got the river, and you got, you've got, if, you're, if you're ever on a river, you'll, you'll notice that there is, the, there is the, the, uh, the flow of the river. And you can read, you begin to read the river. You can sit, tell by how the river's moving, where the river's moving, and where the calm waters are. And those calm waters over when you, on the side are called eddy, you eddy out. You know, you can come right out of a rapid and go right into an eddy. Amen. Well, let's face it, and I'm going to tell you something. The rapids are fun. They're wide open. But man, you're riding the rapid, you're going down, you're coming up, the water's splashing all in, you know, and then, you know, and, but you can go over into the eddy, and that's still that same river, and it's still going downstream. It's just not spectacular. But, you know, you, you can find some nice, resting, and comforting places, I mean, especially, especially if you just came through a rough rapid. You love the eddies. Hello? I think the last time I went with the RMI group, I, I flipped our boat. They won't go anymore. I told the guy, I said, let's flip the boat. He said, all right. Because we knew there's a, there's a rapid on that river. All you got to do is get everybody in the back. So we put all the novices up front. And all the people who've been before got at the back. He said, now when I tell you, you slide back real hard. So we got into that rapid. And he, he reaches back with his paddle and digs down. We all slide back. And, it, and the front of the thing goes, and you just watch it go boom, boom, boom. And the raft go right on over. <laughs> I mean, the boat raft, raft go right on over. Tony McKinnon's wife won't even talk to me about rafting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we do do things like take bell buckets and throw on them. And all, I mean, just you got to have fun when you're on the river. And we went with the church one time, and two of the girls came out. They had barbieized. They got their hair done and they go on white water raft to put their makeup on. I took care of that first thing. Bell bucket. All right, let's have some fun now. They're mad with me the rest of the day. All right. You may not have ever forgive me. I don't know. I could be honorary. Hallelujah. Well, see, it's more fun that way. Now I don't have to worry about getting their hair wet. It's already taken care of. <laughs> Fix that right out to start with. <laughs> Well, I might get my hair wet. Okay, now let's go. <coughs> Hallelujah. Where was that before I got honorary? Amen. Yeah, talking about the river. So the, the spectacular flow of the river is exciting. It is. Now, me and Nathan go up to Cherokee occasionally, and we go camping, and there, the, um, there's a river there, the big, big, uh, big Raven River. And it's up from the Cherokee at KOA campground. And it runs down into the Okafenokee River there in, in Cherokee. Conalofty, I'm sorry. Conalofty River. But the big, big Raven runs into it. And we can go up there, and, the, and for $10 a day, you can just go tube all day. They'll take, keep taking you back up. You can go all day. And uh, so we, we're, it takes about, you, know, you usually get two rides in, if you, unless you start early in the morning. And um, so we'll go down there. And, you know, you got places where you're just floating. And you got places that's really pretty, pretty rough. You know, for an inch or two. And, uh, but it's the same river. The river didn't change just because it got more spectacular in some places than it did in the others. And the Holy Spirit doesn't change. You know, he's, he's not different just because there's a more spectacular manifestation somewhere. Amen. Doesn't mean that when he gets to a calmer manifestation, 
or a different manifestation, that it's not him. And so we are in the flow with God. You're going to have different types of flows. But it's the same river. You might have white water rapids here. You might have really calm water here. But it's the Spirit of God. So he anoints the teaching and the preaching. And we need to mature so we're not just looking for the spectacular. And then God's speaking things in the teaching and preaching anointing that will absolutely revolutionize our life and miss that because we wanted the, we wanted the chair breakers. We wanted to break some chairs and, and rip chandeliers out of the ceiling. A bobblehead for me, come on. I'm just going to get me a whole set of church bobbleheads. Set them out in the pews and have vibrators in the seats. Amen. All right, we're going to, have to, um, we're going to have to pick up here next week because it's, it's too late to keep going for another one. So we'll pick up next Sunday. I thought we were going to get further tonight we did, than we did. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.